This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We've got a Linux uh, Energens unit that we need to put a new VFD on. Um, I've talked about this before because I've done a repair on this where I had two bad capacitors for the condenser fan motors. Um, took a while to get the VFD, but we're gonna go ahead and replace it now. So we open this guy up and you'll see the drive right in here, kind of blown apart. Uh, this is a 480 volt system, so we do have to be extra careful. Not that you don't have to be careful with any electricity, but 480 is not something to mess with. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing taken apart and get started on it. So I've powered down the unit. I'm still going to verify that the disconnect switch is working. I haven't done that yet, but just opening up the drive. This drive is supposed to come programmed, so I shouldn't have to do anything. But Linux does have some instructions in here. Um, and if you do have to do any programming, then just call tech support and they'll walk you right through it. Sometimes it might say it in here, but no, it actually doesn't. So it should be a plug and play situation. We've just got in and out on the drive right here. And it looks like a control thing, but we gotta make sure none of the wires are burnt or anything. So I'm just gonna follow the incoming wires going to the top of this disconnect switch, or I mean this uh, contactor, and we've got no voltage there check the other side I'm gonna check a bunch of different various places to make sure I'm not mistaken in my incoming power I'm gonna check the bottom of it nothing 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 so looks like I need to change the battery in my meter too but um yeah no voltage so we're good to get started on this thing it's very important when you're working with these drives and I've said this many times before that you do not mix up the incoming and the outgoing voltage if you cross them this exact thing will happen the drive will explode so you cannot cross the incoming and the outgoing power sources on these drives you will be in for a very big surprise as I'm working in here just kind of getting things ready and unscrewing this drive I look over and I notice this electrical short right here and then I start investigating and check this out look at that that looks shady so we're gonna have to repair that too I don't know what that plug is for but we'll get that fixed up so they actually make like a whole plate that comes out that makes it a little bit easier. So pulled the whole plate out, bolted up the new drive. It's just got some covers on it. And notice that they, they have wiring right here saying, or labeling saying only the motor goes here, okay? Do not connect incoming line voltage. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. You don't want to mess this up. So I'm going to start disassembling this old drive, which is right here. It's got all the wires and we're just going to go wire for wire. And then we'll get it figured out. We're gonna try to stay with the same colors. So it goes pink, yellow, blue. Pink, yellow, blue. Watch out for straggler wires. Again, not that it doesn't matter on other voltages, but on 480 volts, 460 volts, it can jump. So if you've got straggling wires hanging out, going next to other straggling wires, you can have electrical shorts. So you're gonna be very cautious. Very, very cautious. So pink, yellow, blue is my combination. like to torque them down and then back it out and then go back in you'll get a good tightening out of it okay make sure we leave that down there so that way I remember motor goes there you gotta be careful too because you can uh, you can break these terminals
Okay, so we're nice and tight there. Better do my ground wire. Okay, so I'll go ahead and cut this off so that way I can get to these guys right here. We're gonna have to get these out. These look like they have like little push pins or something. Little clips that you push on. Maybe right here. So yellow goes to two. Yeah. So if you push on it, it comes out. Okay, cool. So yellow goes to two. Interesting. Nice and snug. I'd like to see it go in a little bit more. There you go. Yellow goes to two. Brown goes to five. There we go. Yeah, see they're going in there nice and good. Brown goes to five. Purple goes to B as in boy. If I can get it out. There you go. So you just want to line these up wire for wire. Shouldn't be a big deal. One of the cool things about the Linux units is, is they actually have the letter of where it goes on the VFD drive stamped on the wire too, so. But still, I like to do it line for line. SD. Gray goes to SD. And these jumpers, they stay where they're at. They're already on there. And then pink goes to STF. STF. Okay. So now we're hooked up. And we're ready to start figuring out how to plug this drive back in and get it all set up. So I should be able to go ahead and put this cover back on. If I can figure out how to clip it back in. There we go. And then this front cover should be able to go on. That's on, that's safe. Now we need to get it hooked back into the unit. So I figured out that the burnt wire was actually the plug going to the motor. So we gotta cut those and splice them. So it's gonna be this connector to this connector and I'm gonna have to find some room because it's kinda tight and we need to splice them. So I ended up using butt connectors. That way I wasn't pulling on them with wire nuts. You know, wire nuts are nicer because if someone ever had to bypass this, they could easily take it off, but there's so limited space and I don't have this gauge wire to go ahead and do a splice point. So went ahead and did butt connectors. I'm gonna go ahead and tape them up really good. You always wanna be careful because sometimes when you're crimping them, you can break the jacket of the plastic right here and then it can be a hazard. So, but anyways, it's good practice to always tape them up, whether it's wire nuts, any kind of connectors you're using. So we'll get them taped up and then uh, we'll power this unit on. Taped up nice and good. Um, obviously the other one had shorted out against the side of the panel right here. So I made sure that I zip tied these up so that way they're out of the way and they're not gonna rub on the panel or anything like that. Uh, I'm just gonna do a visual inspection in here. It looks like there's a mess of thermostat wires and stuff, but I'm not gonna spend a ton of time. I might clean up some of it, but get them away from the discharge lines and stuff. But. Uh, yeah, so I'll get ready to turn this thing on here in just a minute. So some last minute checks before I power this guy up. I'm just verifying 100% that I do not have line voltage hooked up to the load side of this drive. The other thing that you wanna be careful about is this unit has a bypass contactor, which I believe is this. 
So if the unit senses that the drive has failed, it'll bypass it automatically. And you have to be careful because if the bypass contactor is welded shut or pulled in, then when I power it on, I could apply power to the, it could just be a problem. So you gotta be careful. Another thing, whenever you have a VFD drive like this, uh, you never wanna push in contactors because if this one's energized and you push this one in, it can be a problem. So you gotta be cautious. And again, I need to verify. I was just following their legend, which is right here that says that S42 or K202 is this contactor. And they're saying that this is, I believe the bypass, but I just need to verify that just checking everything, last minute checks before I power it up. Gonna be very careful and standing out of the way when I power this on, just to be safe. Don't want any big surprises. Gonna let it power up without my face getting in there. Wait for things to turn on. So it says VFD bypass engaged on the scrolling marquee, which my phone's not gonna show it. So we need to disengage that. All right, so we are running properly now. So when I started it up, the unit was in an automatic VFD bypass. Um, I can't show you on the marquee because my phone won't pick it up, but I went ahead and talked to technical support uh, and I asked them how to disengage that VFD bypass. And what we did was he had me go through the settings and change the VFD bypass to manual. His theory was that automatic bypass, maybe something might be happening in there that was causing it to pull in when it shouldn't have pulled in. Because if both of these contactors pull in at the same time, that's when you can have a problem. Other than that, everything checks out okay. My unit has 487 volts, which you know is within tolerance. Everything else is looking good. We now have a VFD reading. I don't know if it's gonna pick it up. Yeah, it doesn't pick it up very well. But we are reading 59 Hertz. Both stages are calling. So we're looking good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call this quits. I'm going to verify motor rotation and then that's going to be it. So this was just a walkthrough of how I go about my um, process of changing components in general. But I mean this VFD, you know, I take this approach to everything. And I'm sure if you guys have been watching my videos, you guys realize that I take a very methodical approach to doing things. OK, when I when I start a project, a process or whatever, I like to think as much as I can before about the things that can go wrong and how I can be as efficient as possible. So that way when I'm doing it, you know, I prevent mistakes and also I get it done as fast as possible. Uh, for instance, you know, paying attention to how the old drive was wired up or taking the drive out and wiring it up side by side. Yes, I could figure it out and yes, I could just unwire everything and follow the schematic. But you know, I like to make my job as easy as possible. I don't want to have to work hard, okay? We just follow the simple processes. And if we, in, in doing that, you actually um, learn how things work and you can, um, you know, better yourself, basically. So when I call technical support, for instance, you know, um, I, I ask them, you know, if, I, if I'm curious about something, I've got them on the phone, ask them, you know, hey, how does this work? How does this VFD bypass that you guys have in this unit, the automatic VFD bypass work? And I'm in my head trying to figure out what made this drive go bad. And in my conversation with technical support, they kind of told me that they think, I mean, this isn't what they said, but what I understood it as there's a possibility that the automatic bypass feature that's built into these Linux units is what's causing these drives to go bad. This is a very common thing on these Linux units. I mean, it drives in general have a hard time. They're always installed in the worst places. But when you have a drive blown up like this, it's very um, likely that someone sent power to the load side of that drive and it causes the capacitors inside to kind of explode and it's a big deal. So in talking with tech support, I asked him about the bypass and how that works. And basically, if the unit senses that the drive is not working properly, it automatically applies the bypass. And what it does is it sends power to the bypass contactor. Well, if you energize the drive contactor and the bypass contactor at the same time, you're going to send power to the wrong side of that drive. And so with talking to tech support, they kind of said, you know, it's probably best to go ahead and put the bypass into manual mode, meaning that the unit will not automatically switch you know, and bypass it. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe there's something, whatever senses that the drive is not working, maybe that's malfunctioning and causing the unit to try to bypass it when power's already being applied to the drive. And then you get the big boom and then the unit dies. Um, 
again, that's just my logic. I don't know if there's anything behind it. That's just how things work in my head. Um, but other than that, guys, there's really not a whole lot with this. I mean, this was just kind of a simple component change, like for like. But you guys, you know, when I film this video, I'm not really taking any extra time. This is how long this takes me. I mean, I, I literally go through all this in my head. As if I turned off the camera, I'd probably still be talking to myself just in the same way. That's how I, I rationalize things. That's how I troubleshoot is just by verbally saying them and then it just kind of helps my brain to comprehend maybe my brain's kind of slow or something like that but that's just how i roll um and that's you know how i go about doing this stuff all right hopefully you guys get something from this whether it's just a a way not to approach things or maybe it's a way to approach things you know let me know in the comments um i really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos uh you know other than that, guys, I will uh, catch you on the next one. Oh, and don't forget that uh, I always do live streams Monday nights, work permitting, meaning that if work lets me, I do my live streams 5 p.m. Pacific time uh, where I answer all these questions and stuff. So leave me some comments down in the bottom of this video. And other than that, we'll catch you guys on the next one, okay?